Welcome back to the channel. I'm sorry this video sorry. took a little bit longer than I expected it to. Um, actually, this is the second time that I'm shooting this video. I previously did a video um, comparing the Highland Amplification Direwolf and the Aeris FX Nebula Advanced Overdrive using my uh, Laney Ironheart. But ultimately, I felt like more and more I'm feeling like these preamp pedals and modelers and everything are the way to go for stuff like this. And those amps for me are largely going to be something that I use for recordings and for uh, live playing and stuff. That's not going to be always the case, but generally this workflow is just a lot better for me. But yeah, anyway, glad to be back at this. So today we're going to compare what I think are the two coolest overdrives that came out in 2019. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they carry through 2020 and continue to be the coolest overdrives but hopefully something other than these come out so there's something new to play with but we're going to utilize the Aeris FX Nemesis preamp and the rectifier model in my helix for the two tones that we're going to try and boost with these pedals um, before we start let me show you guys that hey I'm tuned half step down there's no uh, Apex preamp in this video. That's usually the video, the uh, gear that makes people, for some reason, think that my guitar isn't in tune. But whatever way. Using my Black Hat HDA8 with uh, Fishman Fluence Modern pickups in it. We're gonna stay in, mostly in the uh, passive voicing. But all right, let's get at it. Um, as a real quick explanation of this pedal both of these are overdrives this looks a lot more complicated but in actuality it is just an overdrive but it has a bunch of cool features that you can only access when you hook it up to an effects loop although in this case it's not hooked up to an effects loop I still have access to those features which are the muscle control which lets me dial in and out low end and a master volume control which really won't matter too much for this video but muscle will be a pretty big point of comparison here. But alright, let's get into it. So this is going to be the tone from the Nemesis preamp. Um, I'm going for a very dry tone out of this, so we're probably going to use it to see how it takes gain from the pedals when we dial that in, but we'll get there. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. It's very dry, probably a little boring. That is definitely the type of tone that I would really like to boost. And that, of course, the Nemesis preamp can get more dynamic than that, but I, I want it set up to take these overdrives. So, all right. Um, we're going to start with none of the bells and whistles on. So all of these, both of these pedals have switches that can add top end or low end and change the clipping mode. We're going to leave all that stuff off and just use them as clean boosts first. So we're going to only mess with level and tone and leave everything else off for both of these. Alright, let's start with the direwolf. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So you can definitely get a very extreme sound with the tone maxed out on the now. I think it's probably too much. It didn't seem like the Dire Wolf became that extreme. Like, I, I don't think I would generally use the tone full on the now in most cases, whereas, yeah, I could see myself using the, uh, the tone, the full uh, range of tone on the Dire Wolf. The tone knob, to clarify. Okay, both fine, but like I said, I have a little bit of treble and a little bit of bass dialed out on the Nemesis preamp. So we're going to use these pedals to see which can kind of get at, well, what, what it's like when we try and add both treble and bass to the, our sound using these pedals. First of all, let's get volume and tone to a place where I like them. Max volume for sure. And let's say tone at around 2.30 on them now. Tone around 3.30 on the Dire Wolf. Like I said, the Dire Wolf feels like it has a little bit more usable range in terms of the tone knob. Well, that's probably not accurate to say. Let's say that uh, because the tone, I can hear a bunch changing as I adjust the tone knob on the uh, now, but it just, you have a bunch of freedom with it. So when, it, when you do max it out, I found it unpleasant in this case, at least. Whereas the tone on Dire Wolf feels like more of a smooth curve, so it's like it's it feels like it's almost foolproof in that you probably can't get a terrible sound out of it. <laughs> Alright, so the first thing that jumps out to me is that this tone is lacking some bite. So let's use the bite control to add some in. Sounds like. 
I think that put us in a different direction. So I'm thinking like pr those proggy, crunchy type of tones from like the Polyphia guys and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> settings on their uh, most trebly settings. <laughs> So this is the tight mode, which cuts some low end. I find that pleasant. Let's see what the fat mode, which adds some low end, does. Good for chunky stuff, but I noticed when I played what I was just playing, um, because of that added low end, those notes kind of start to blend into each other, and that's not what I'm going for right now. Definitely better on the tight mode for this set. For what I'm, for the sound one. So growl is the, the direwolf's uh, bass adjustment uh, switch. So putting it down, it's in normal right now. Putting it down will add some bass, and putting it up will add the most bass. So here it is going from normal to down for more bass, but not the most. <laughs> overtaking kind of the notes and then blending together but not as much as I was getting with the uh, now in fat mode to my ears. Let's go up to most bass. Now I definitely did. So it feels like the now's fat and the uh, growl on here seem fairly uh, the now's growl in the up position seemed fairly uh, comparable. rhythm tone out of this and we're going to start uh, dialing in some pedal gain. <laughs> Thank you. 
game mode, this is um, mostly affected when you start to uh, bring pedal gain into the settings, like the voicing of the game. <laughs> fuzzy type deals with it with it in every mode except for uh, symmetrical <laughs> to turn the volume down some from full. It doesn't it just doesn't need that much.
All right, so now let's look at some of the super cool, like the unique things about these pedals. Pretty much everything we looked at so far, these pedals basically have in common. So the Direwolf has a, this blend knob right here. So I don't think it's really gonna be terribly helpful in this context, but basically I can blend in, by turning this from full, I can blend in some of my dry guitar signal. <laughs> which is actually kind of useful when combined with this boost function right here. So basically, you can increase the, uh, the amount of gain that this pedal has, that this pedal pushes out. So let's do that. In my experience, it's quite a freaking lot when you increase, when you add, turn this on. just a very small amount of gain. Pump the tone just a little bit more. And now mess with the muscle control. parametric EQ right here so believe it or not sometimes the best thing that you can do for your tone is to take something away instead of add to it so let's try and cut out some of the low end from this <laughs> Here's our dry sound. 
I'm going to turn on my uh, rectifier model in the Helix. Of course, the rectifier, the Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier is one of the amps that's known as being best used with an overdrive, typically as a clean boost. So let's see how well that translates here. We're gonna turn the boost back off on here and reset the EQ on the now. Going back to basically just a clean boost with no bells and whistles. All right. Because we'll start with the now this time. pretty much what folks are going for when they think about a boosted rectifier, to my ears.
some of that extra flubbiness that this rectifier has. It's pretty awesome what both of these pedals do to this tone.
Alright, we'll pretty much cut it there. So basically, both of these pedals are super awesome. I can't think of too many overdrives that could even potentially touch these. I do have a few things in mind that I would like to try. Um, specifically, I do think I'm going to try some of the Lone Wolf audio stuff before long. Um, but yeah, that's down the road. If there's any overdrives that you all can think of that I haven't tried on this channel yet, I'd be super interested to hear what you guys are interested to see. But yeah, let me know which one was your favorite and what you think about both of these guys. Take care.